companies and the products on the CP platform. You'll find out what they are, who they are, and why you should choose them. For today's, we will for today's edition, we will have Vikas Jain, senior senior commercial director of Funding Societies. So Vikas is a senior banking professional with over fifteen years of experience in the financial services space. As a fund, as Funding Societies senior commercial director, he is responsible for the fintech fundraising, investor management, customer experience and end-to-end -end marketing strategy. He is a regular speaker at FinTech, Lending, Investments, and SME events. Prior to funding societies, Vickers has managed and led large portfolios at Citigroup, ING, and Singtel. So Vickers, without further ado, please take it away. Thanks a lot, Clara. Thanks for giving us an opportunity to show showcase ourselves uh, on CD Spotlight. Um, I'll just write, start off uh, by addressing uh, what we are trying to do here. So we are trying to um, fill up a SME financing gap in Southeast Asia, which is fairly large, as you can see on your screens. It's almost $320 billion, out of which uh, $200 billion are actually in the markets that we operate, which is Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia. And this gap is primarily due to the fact that uh, traditional financial institutions are not funding them, funding these SMEs, or not funding them enough. So if you go by uh, these statistics, which is from World Bank and IFC, uh, almost 166 billion out of this 320 billion is in Indonesia itself, which also happens to be our large, largest market. And Singapore, even though you wouldn't think of Singapore as an underserved or unserved market, you still have a $20 billion gap right now, which we are trying to cover. And uh, so far, through digital financing, there's only 1% out of this 320 billion has been covered. So the upside is huge, and that's what we are trying to do here. And how we do it, uh, so, and which is very important for you as well, is that we are a marketplace lending platform. We are a P2P lending platform, as we are also known as. Uh, so we, on one side, we have SMEs who are trying to raise funds, uh, usually for the expansion or working capital or for that. Uh, or, or to build a track record so that they can qualify for bank loans at times as a top up to their bank loan. Majority of the SMEs in Singapore have a bank loan, but they're looking for something extra, which is short term and uh, which they can get faster than, say, traditional financial institutions. That's where we come in. From an investor's perspective, you actually lend to these SMEs and the interest that they pay is the return on your investments. This product helps you to diversify your portfolio. Um, this is another asset class which you can explore, uh, you know, within within your other investments. It's also you can start very small and you can do really short term investments, which is not really available in the market. As you can see, we are licensed by MAS uh, and uh, we are, uh, you know, we have been there for about five years plus now. Our history goes back to 2014, where our founders met at Harvard. That's where they came across P2P lending in USA. And then they said, because both the founders are from Southeast Asia, they thought they should start it in uh, this part of the world as well. So in 2015 is when we launched in Singapore. 2016 is when we launched in Indonesia. 2016 is also when we raised our first round of funding uh, on our equity side with investors such as Sequoia. Subsequently, SoftBank and a few others have also participated. In 2016 was a great year for us because we were the first P2P lending platform to also win an award from MAS during the Singapore FinTech Festival. In 2017, we launched Malaysia. We were honored to be awarded uh, a Global SME Excellence Award by the United Nations in that year. In 2018, we were conferred amongst the top 100 FinTech companies globally by KPMG. Later this uh, last year, uh, we also applied for a digital wholesale banking license in Singapore, for which the results are awaited very soon. Lastly, recently, we have just closed out uh, 40 million in our Series C commitments. Uh, so far, uh, you know, we have already got about 27,000 registered investors in Singapore, and they have funded, we have funded about 1.7 billion in loans across the three markets. Uh, in terms of our team, uh, you can see Kelvin and Renault are the two founders 
uh, for funding societies. They come from, uh, they did their masters in, at Harvard. Kelvin also uh, has worked with Accenture, McKinsey, and KKR in the consulting fields. If you look at most of uh, our senior management, they come from either financial services or consulting or technology background. Uh, we also have our uh, chief advisor, which is uh, who's an ex-finance minister in Indonesia. Uh, we are funded, as I mentioned earlier, we are funded by Sequoia, SoftBank. SG Innovate is a recent addition to our shareholders, uh, as many of you would have know about them. Qualgro, Golden Gate, Line Ventures, and Alpha JWC are the other shareholders in the company. In terms of risks, uh, we have, again, a very strong management, risk management uh, team with uh, our compliance director, who is an ex-MAS employee. Uh, we have our uh, uh, VP of risk management from Bank Mandiri. We have people uh, We have people with a lot of experience in SME lending who are actually underwriting these loans and, and uh, before they come to you for investments. So far, as I mentioned, we have done more than uh, $1.8 billion worth of loans uh, across more than 3 million loans in the region. Majority of these loans are in Indonesia because there are a lot of small ticket loans there. Um, so far, our default rate has been uh, pretty good at about 1.4%, and we are licensed across all the three countries. If you look at the graph on your left uh, side of your screen, you will see a steady growth of uh, in terms of volumes for us, except that there's a blip due to COVID. And I'll cover that more later. You, you might be thinking, what is in it for you as an investor here? So first of all, these the, the returns that you earn on our platform are exempted from tax. Uh, we are the first and probably the only platform which where the returns are tax exempted. Uh, what you earn, as we mentioned earlier, is in the returns in the form of interest that the SME pays to you. We charge a small service fee, that, uh, but that's only on success basis. That means that only when you receive your repayment is when we charge our service fee. There's no upfront fee. The tenors are very short, and the max tenor goes up to about 12 months, which also means that you are not locked into this investment for a long time. The average tenor is about four to five months on a, on a Singapore platform. The, you Even if you want to start small or, or if you are someone who doesn't want, who wants to test out the, uh, the product and the platform before you start putting in more money, you can just start with $20 per investment. It's probably the lowest in Singapore for any comparable asset class. You can also reinvest very quickly. Uh, the way you can do it is that when, as and when you re, uh, receive repayment, you can use that amount to reinvest because majority of our repayment is either on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis. In terms of products, we probably have um, the most number of products compared to any other P2P lending platform in Singapore. The products are divided into three different segments. The first is the guaranteed product, so guaranteed, we have a property-backed investment product, which is primarily properties in Singapore uh, where you invest. But we also put in an additional layer of guarantee in case there's a default in that particular loan. And this is primarily the only risk that you face, which is the default risk. But we cover that with the additional layer of guarantee, which means that even with any kind of a default, you still get your money on time. Similarly, we have the regular guaranteed return investment, which is not property backed. That's on the bottom left of your screen. It doesn't have a property backing it, but it's still guaranteed. The returns tend to be uh, a bit lower in, on guaranteed products because of the guarantee compared to the other products. As we move to the right, the, then we have the asset backed, which is primarily the property backed and invoice backed. You will see that property being a, a superior asset class has lower returns compared to the, the invoices. Uh, having said that, uh, so far on a property-backed portfolio, there are zero defaults. So on a net basis, this is still quite attractive for most of the investors that we speak to. On, on your extreme right is the non-asset-backed. These are primarily unsecured, uh, but the returns uh, or, or the gross returns tend to be a lot higher. 
because we are able to charge a higher interest rate on these products compared to the 